Uh, hi. Hey, nice t-shirt. Oh, thanks. Yeah, I like that. That's well, nice. It's two days before the genocide, here we are. Yeah, that's true. That's All true. Right. Did you see the digital march that they're going to have? No, I was, I was actually, I saw one of my friends posted something and I was about to open the link and one of my kids grabbed my phone. <laughs> I mean, so it, ha it happens, right? And right. Also, it's going to be a digital march. Um, so really excited about that. Um, okay, so I think we're having people that are joining already. So yeah, I think we'll wait just start. a couple minutes for people to start joining in. And then I will talk about all things beauty. All, all, all things stuff. beauty. Gonna How's your day? What, what uh, you do? I put makeup on. Me too. <laughs> I put a little I makeup. It's for you. <laughs> well, I put it for you too. I even did my hair. You know, it feels good. Like, it feels good. You know, as, as cliche as it could sound, it just feels good to, like, dress up and uh, even... Wash your hair. Wash your hair. I wash the front of my hair. The rest is dry shampoo. <laughs> and go for dry shampoo. But that's another, that's a trick, you know. When I used to have my really long, this is my halo, but when I used to have my really long hair after the baby, I had, you know, very thick hair and... <clears throat> blonde hair is porous, so it takes a really long time to dry. And, you know, I would be in the in a hurry, and <clears throat> I'm not somebody that likes to leave the house without my hair, that, or used to be, <clears throat> before baby number two. So I used to just literally take a shower, take the front of my hair, go down, wash it, and then just blow dry it. And, like, it literally refreshed my entire hair. It just looked like I washed it. What dry shampoo do you use? Um, I switch between, there's two, so on the on really heavy days that I need like that extra coverage, I use Kevin Murphy. I love Kevin Murphy. I love their products. They do a lot for the environment. They're cruelty-free. They're vegan. Um, they also have a program. I don't know if you've heard of it, but it's an ocean program where they clean out the oceans. Oh. Um, it, they're amazing. They're, they're great. Um, it's pro only, so you can only find it in like, you know, your favorite salon or or, you know. A beauty like a beauty mark or one of those places beauty solutions but other than that they're pro um and then my second one my hair is not really oily so i think um amika what are you <laughs> yeah it's not very well it gets really oily because my roots are not done so all, all the oil gathers here because the blonde doesn't really collect a lot of oil so all the oil gathers here so generally i you know i uh, i will have more oil when i first when I first get my highlights done, like I don't do it, but I, if I wanted to, I could go weeks. Like wow. it's, it's that, yeah, because you know, the, the bleach takes away a lot of the oil, obviously, but for, so for like, you know, lighter days, I go with Amika, Amika is my favorite one. We have it at the salon. But uh, why I like Amika is what they taught us when they were doing a, a class with us when, you know, because we were all new, like, a lot of my stylists were new to Amika. It was a newer brand for us. So when they did like the product knowledge, um, they they gave us a couple of tricks. And one of them that I never knew, and you know, my sister's been a stylist for 18 years. Um, my One of my closest friends, Helen, she's been a stylist for, you know, 15 years. So what we did, a lot of us didn't know is when you spray it at night, because your oil, oil glands tend to work at night, you know? Mm -hmm. So when you spray it overnight and you wake up in the morning, your hair is less greasy. Than if you had just like waited and then done the... Yeah, so like at night, like before you're going to sleep, you just, you know, you'll spray the dry shampoo, you know, and then you'll go to sleep. And then you wake up in the morning and you'll notice the difference. Um, with with other, there's a lot of like the, the shampoos that leave a white residue. And a lot of people are like, you know, I'm a brunette. Can you give me a shampoo? It, there's really not a brunette or blonde dry shampoo. Some dry shampoos are meant to be cleared out. So when you put it on, you're, you're meant to like wipe it off. Go like that, yeah. Yeah, I know it sounds weird, but like you're supposed to kind of wipe it off. Mm -hmm. So I've, I've learned that trick. But because I'm blonde and usually my roots are blonde when like it's highlighted, um, I don't have to do that. So, you know, I just kind of mix it in and it looks really good. Um, but for the brunettes that um, it does show, it's you just take like a, a, a you know, a towel and just wipe it off. And it, it, you know, wait a couple of minutes, let it soak in and then just kind of wipe it off. 
So that's what I've learned. So this morning I was like, I that's a that's a neat trick because I think like with with me when I used to use dry shampoo, um, the thing about that was it, I think it was just so oily at that point that it felt like I was putting oil with like baby powder, right. and it was like forming this like very weird consistency in my hair, and yeah. I became really irritated to it. So like my scalp would get really irritated. So I actually stopped using dry shampoo because of that. But I wonder if I just like did it at night if it would kind of fix my problem yeah you could try it you know you could try just putting it at night and then waking up in the morning and see how your hair reacts yeah i haven't really heard of a lot of people having problems unless you overuse it that's another thing is you don't want to overuse it because at the end of the day it's dry shampoo and it'll dry your hair you know and if you don't use like a clarifying shampoo every now and again to wash off like the residue and the excess residue off your hair it will obviously create build up you know, so clarifying shampoo is great. But other than that, you know, every, you know, once a week using dry shampoo is not going to harm your hair, you know, and you just have to find one. <laughs> Anna, I know, my friend Anna, <laughs> she's on, she, it's actually her birthday. Happy birthday. Happy Anna. birthday. <laughs> and Anna is um, a redhead with really long hair and her hair is curly and curly hair is generally dry, mm-hmm. you know, so she could go a week without, washing your ha- her hair and you will not see a drop of oil on her hair not one drop but do she you but do you do anything for your ends then um so that yeah like your hair is actually going to be dry hair but do you like do you wet your hair because i see a lot of my like curly haired friends would go to the faucet and just turn it on and go curly and just like put it, water in their hair honestly for me like i don't have i don't have curly hair my I, mine's the opposite my hair is like super straight um, but I know, we, you know, a lot of curly, or a lot of curly clients either hate their curls, so they get a, they get a blowout, Brazilian blowout to straighten it, or, you know, anything that will straighten it out. Um, but, uh, yeah, there's a dry conditioner, there she goes. There is actually, there's such thing as dry shampoo, and there's such thing as dry conditioner. Uh, two of my favorite dry conditioners are, one is Kevin Murphy, it's called Young Again, and the other one is Amika, and it literally just brings life back to your hair. So if you're putting dry shampoo on your top and then you're spraying, and I think I, I think I might've given you guys, either you or Larissa, I gave you guys a dry conditioner. If I didn't, I'm going to give you one. But you kind of, okay. when, you, when you spray it towards your ends and it just brings a little bit of shine. <laughs> My husband. I can't, I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come back to this. I'm just waiting. <laughs> oh my God, I, uh, yeah. Um, so, you know, someone like, <laughs> someone like my husband, <laughs> hi Val, someone like my husband, for instance, he washes his hair every single day and he has like super curly hair and I make him grow it out. I hate when he cuts his hair and like, it's literally down to like right here if he, he was to straighten it and, um, he washes it every single day. And sometimes he washes it twice a day cause he'll take a shower twice a day and he'll wash it twice a day. But, but he, with every wash, he uses oil. And he's been doing that for like 15 years or 20 or however long he's been doing that. But he's able to grow his hair. So clearly he's doing something right. Well, he's getting caught all the time. Trim is very important. <laughs> he knows that. He doesn't come to me to a barber shop because <laughs> he likes the fade and, you know. Um, but other than that, yeah, he washes his hair every day and he has like curly hair. Um, I don't even know if his hair is oily because he just, I never see it like past one day. Yeah. I can really relate. I can relate. I used to do it all the time. He has super hair. Honestly, I think John should be on this like live stream because he has all the I'm going to bring him in. He's actually in the other room. So I'm going to bring him in in a couple of minutes. Yeah. Um, I'm sure he has a lot to say. He's the social one. He's the social one in the relationship. I'm usually the one that's quiet and like we'll be in the room with, with a ton of people and within like a matter of 15 minutes he's friends with everyone you know and i'm just quiet you know hey angela oh look who joined us i was I, uh i told her that i'm gonna actually call her in a little bit and we'll have her give us some advice you know from a professional and um you know if we have any Perfect. hair questions angela we'll will be answering those and i will call her on my facetime and i'll turn the camera so everyone can see her as well Um, yeah, but there's a lot of things we wanted to talk about. Um, you know, obviously the beauty industry is not where, you know, we want it to be right now. Um, (laughs) you know, why is your sister against deodorant? (laughs) (laughs) Oh my God. 
guys, we should have a family discussion yeah. around this. So, <laughs> so, so, you know, the hair industry is, is going to come back. And everyone asks me, you know, yes, I'm new to this. It's, it's very new to me. But I see stylists every day of my life and, and, and they're strong people. And it's going to be, it's going to, they're all going to come back and it's going to come back so much better and so much stronger, you know, because people at the end of the day need their hair done. And no matter how much you can manage to do your hair at home. And, you know, even if you have find a way to do your roots, your grays, you know, you need the professional at least every couple of months to give you that trim you know, to, for it to grow faster. Like you were talking to Val about, you know, the difference in scissors, you know, my stylists have shears that are, you know, $3,000. Right. You right. know, I, when, when we first opened, we hosted a class um, for hair cutting and, uh, you know, three, four of my stylists bought like $2,000 shears and with no problem because they know that, that, that is so important you know, to, that is so important to them because that gives the, them the right tools. It's like a doctor not having the right tools, you know? So, or training. Right. That's true. Right. And, and, uh, and, you know, hair, yeah, haircuts. I see a couple of, I saw a couple of, uh, you know, stylists um, doing YouTube videos on how to cut your own hair. And I understand everyone has to like survive. And I understand that you want to teach your client how to do it right. Mm -hmm. But I would encourage the clients not to touch your hair because nothing's going to happen to your hair if you don't trim it for, you know, another month. I'm not saying go six months a year without it, but, you know, it, nothing's going to happen. If you're not putting excess amount of heat on your hair, you know, and you're not, you're not overusing product and, you, you, you know, you're taking care of your hair at home, which you should be because you're not going anywhere. So there's no reason for you to strain your hair or curl your hair every single day. And if you're doing that, you really don't need that cut. It's not so important. Wait until your stylist sees you. You know, wait for, for your, your stylist who a lot of them are your friends and you want to help them out as well. And it's, right. not, it's not just the fact that you can or cannot do it. You know, they rely on that. That's their, that's their Come. existence, you know. So, Diana, um, sorry, I, I actually wanted to kind of go in a little bit into detail about that. So clearly the situation has really impacted salon salon industries a lot of them are talking about you know what is the future of the beauty industry but clearly as of right now there are thousands if not millions of hairstylists across the united states that are just you know without a job and fortunately are not able to work um what can like people do right now what can clients specifically do right now to support hairstylists uh, individually but what can they also do to support salons because i think um while stylists are like, you know, entrepreneurs on their own uh, to kind of go out there and learn a skill and offer it, but also they, they are hosted, right, somewhere in that place is also right. a place that needs support. So how can we support them um, in both ways? Well, I would say there's a couple of, a couple of ways, you know, for independent stylists, I, I will go into independent stylists and then I will go into how to support your local salon, <laughs> you know, um, as a salon owner, I don't work behind a chair you know, and I still have every, every bill I was paying prior to this, I'm still paying. And unfortunately, small businesses are overlooked. You know, a lot of big businesses that we know have already received help, you know, while, you know, either we will never get it or, you know, we might get lucky and get it. But no matter what, we have to survive. And we have to survive not just for for my sake, but for my stylist who love being at the salon and who, who consider it their home, you know, there's so many different things that we could do. Um, for your for your stylist, for your independent stylist, I would say book in advance, book your appointment, pre-book, you know, maybe prepay by a package of like blow dries or whatever it is um, to help them. I would say leave them a review on Yelp, on Google. On Google is super easy. All you have to do is just go in and, um, and, uh, you know, give them five stars and you really don't even have to give them, um, an actual review. You don't have to write anything. It'll literally take you three seconds, you know, go find your stylist, um, your independent stylist. If, you know, if they're renters, like go find them on Google. If they're not on there, find their salon or both really, you know, um, Yelp is a big deal. Um, you know, go on Yelp and, and give them a great review on Yelp. Um, there's so many other things you could do. Um, 
you know, refer them clients for the future, you know? So just that's, that's how you can support independent stylists. When it comes to your salons, a lot of the salons are still doing product sales. Mm -hmm. So instead of going in, you know, is, John, John, I'm going to ban you. Um, <laughs> I'm going to bring him over here in a second. Instead of going in and buying from a drugstore, you know, you have to realize that a lot of these salons have products that are similar price to your, your, your store, your drugstore shampoo and conditioner, which is going to ruin your hair eventually, you know, you're going to get rid of it after you get a color treatment, you're going to get rid of that shampoo conditioner, you know, so buy product, give them a Yelp review, give them a Google review, you know, follow them on Instagram, um, refer them a client, you know, there's a lot of different things you can do. What about like buying like a uh, future, like vouchers for the future or something? So <laughs> I, I, I might just lose my shit right now. I'm so sorry. So, <sighs> so Maggie is Larissa's sister. Okay. And Larissa's husband is uh, the director for I Am Alone. I'm Not Alone movie. Oh. I Am Alone. Yeah. I'm, I'm alone. I Am Alone. I Am Alone. I Am Alone. I'm not alone. Sometimes I'm alone. This, what's important here? is aside from uh the belly shirt thing <laughs> are you picking on helen helen's not even on it well helen's a good friend of mine so I can <laughs> picked on your sister too <laughs> where's helen i have one suggestion uh -huh. i know um i know that there's going to be a run on the salons when mm -hmm. everything goes back to normal normalizes maybe you can run almost like a 24-hour service so that people can have distance from each other they can isolate on different, um, she has a big salon, so there's plenty of space to isolate. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can run a couple of schedules where you have people operating 24 hours a day. It gives people with different schedules also time to come in because everybody's going to be inundated with work. I don't mm -hmm. know, a suggestion. Hey, that's a great suggestion. I love that. That's a great, that's very smart, actually. John, but I have to ask you, can you, like, show us your hair? Like, you have to tell us what yeah. is, Take what, it out what, what is the secret? Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's night time and I'm at home, so. <laughs> I told him that you were oiling. I don't know if you heard, but. I don't know what my hair you is. oil your hair. It's, I think it's just nappy. Wow. Yeah. Um, and you watch so, it every single day. So, um, yeah, it's right there. <laughs> I'm my hair. But uh, I, I use oil on my hair. I feel like he's like the next beauty influencer. He's he so loves, like loves, he's so loves, mysterious I've, and I've, about I've it. brought home so many different like shampoos, conditioners, you know, from like the brands that I have. And there's a specific one he likes, Velveteen Dream. Yes, I that's like the that. smoothing one, and he makes me bring that one for him, even in the small sizes. So. Well, I used to use Dove. <laughs> Dove is not cruelty. Cool, but do you it is do now. you see a difference? What? Uh, hold on, important question. Do you see the difference between like the Dove shampoo? and the stuff that you're using now. You have to understand that most men are like me. We use the shampoo for our face wash, our body wash. Everything. It's like 101. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's basically, we're not buying two things of anything. If, we, if you see a shampoo <laughs> and conditioner in a man's house, it's a bachelor, that's, all, <laughs> that's already going above and beyond. And by the way, the conditioner will be 80% full of all times. And the shampoo will be almost empty. You like, go through you know, the conditioner real quick. Well, I do now because you've you know, taught you've me. Taught me. <laughs> but I think that also um, it's important for you ladies while you're going to the salon to think of your men that's, that are at home that don't know what they're doing. And I'm serious. And, uh, and think of them while you're at the salon. Get some products that will be good for them so that they don't use your stuff. There's no, reason, like, I, there's no reason why everybody can't be like my wife and get products that are specifically for me that I can use and think of me outside of just going over there and having your girl time. Because every time I go to the salon, she's very, very busy in the chair getting something done to her so that you guys will get the benefit of all her expertise that she learns what works what doesn't work and then she recommends I so that's to try it works. out <laughs> that's right you have to try it out i love that so these are amazing tips and little hacks thank you thanks for stopping by i i i literally was this close to fainting so you good on me back to good on me for not good on me for not <laughs> um, all right, John. Thank he you actually so much. uses my shampoo. It's my shampoo that he uses. I mean, the I think like <laughs> the other question that is really interesting to ask is, I wonder. I love how Angela is like. Serge never uses my products. <laughs> <laughs> John actually started using. Uh, there's a face wash that I like. Actually, Katie, my uh, 
who I used to go to um, for my lashes before I had a salon, you know, seven years ago. She's now a part of our team. She uh, got me, you know, on this product called Lemieux and it's a face wash and it's this big with a pump and it's $24 and it literally lasts you like months and it's incredible. So I got, I, you know, I became, you know, addicted to that and that's all I really buy. And, um, and John now uses it. So um, he had a facial recently. I had him to have a facial and he, I, and you know, my facial is that you have to wear you have to use products like you you have to wash your face you can't just shampoo your face it just doesn't work <laughs> so did it get better did he see a result like was he like I, oh i i get no he sees a result good. like especially especially you know honestly right before he goes on tour and like people are taking pictures and and he sees those pictures and like you know his face his face looks better and you know his skin calms down especially your shampoo is not meant for your face no, you know i don't care how good of skin or how bad of skin you have it's just not it's not for your face you know right. shampoo has things that is you know your face which is your biggest organ is not supposed to take in so of course um i was also going to ask like when did you really get into the kind of the nitty gritty of products. So when did you really start paying attention to what was going in? I mean, that's such a d jump, right? From like Dub or, or any generic brand really. To such oh, we were lucky. Product. My sister's been in the hair industry for a very long time. So she's always brought home the best products and we never really had to go to get a drugstore shampoo because she, you know, she worked at Carlton and she would bring in like Bumble and Bumble or whatever the best, you know, she would always bring it, bring stuff in for us. And she would always bring new products in and we'll always try it. Um, and, you know, I would hear her like talk to her friends. She would do her friends at, at uh, hairs at our house. So I've always kind of been around that. But then um, when I really, when it really mattered was, you know, when it comes to you, it's really, you overlook a lot of things. But when it comes to your child, that's completely different. Now, my sister had... Um, my sister had my nephew eight months before me. So she, you know, she, when she was in the hospital delivering, I just found out I was pregnant. So wow. that's <laughs> yeah. interesting. So she had a birth doula and uh, that birth doula has been, you know, a couple of our friends used her and she was incredible. She was this Cuban lady who had birthed, you know, thousands of children and she had nine of her own and most of them were adopted. And, uh, you know, she would give us all these tips and what to buy because as a new mom, you have no idea. You have no idea like what you should be buying because a lot of these classes that you take and everything, they don't tell you like, they tell you how to change a diaper and they tell you how to do CPR and they tell you other things, but they don't tell you what's in your beauty products. They don't tell you what's in your kid's formula. Like they don't tell you those things, right? So, you know, I was, I, I didn't really know. I didn't really think of it. I didn't think like what's in my deodorant and what's in my shampoo and what's in my body wash. But then when I had a kid, you know, my child, uh, Emma was preemie. She was four pounds. When I brought her home, she was four pounds, 20 ounces. And, you know, my sister already went through the loopholes of, and that's where I got, a bit, got very lucky as well. I was the first one out of my closest group of friends to have kids. But then there was my sister right before us. So she did a lot of the legwork in research and, you know, using ingredients that harm your newborn, who's just this little like thing you bring home and, and you don't want to put any perfumer. And I would be so careful. I remember like they brought flowers to the hospital and, and that was one thing that our doula was like, do not, do not let flowers in your room because it, you know, the allergens and everything, the pollen. So, you know, I remember people would send flowers and I would make my husband take it to the nursing station, you know, and I was so picky. I wouldn't let anyone come near my kid with, with perfume on them, you know, but then what you don't realize is it's also what you put on your body and, and on your sheets, you know? So if you're using everything, uh, you know, baby safe, so perfume free and um, you know, everything that's more natural, organic for your baby, but then you are washing your sheets with Tide, you know, or, you know, you putting um, harsh chemicals on your body, then that baby is near you, whether you're breastfeeding or whether you're holding the baby on you or the baby sleeping in your bed, that's harmful as well. You know, another thing we didn't know is that diapers have 
have uh, chlorine in them, you know? Chlorine mixed with, you know, pee is not a combination. And they don't tell you, like there's, it doesn't say that these diapers have chlorine on them. So you have to really research everything and you have to read what's all these ingredients that you have no idea. Why does my child shampoo have 20 different ingredients that I don't recognize, you right. know? So I remember our doula saying, you know, there's two ingredients you need for your child. And one of them is a soap that's completely clean. So there are soaps that are oatmeal with honey um, or goat milk, pure goat milk. And, and be, back then I would usually buy it on Amazon, but I would really suggest to go on Etsy. It might be a little pricier, but you have to realize these are moms that are hand making it. You know, you're supporting a mother, you're supporting an individual, a small business versus Amazon, who's huge and, you know, doesn't really need, like, you know, so much help from us. So, you know, buying from like an individual at on Etsy, and they make great soaps, like for babies, they do. And then, and then another thing that she suggested for oil was pure safflower oil. And it's incredible. Really? Pure organic safflower, safflower oil is incredible. And it's so hydrating and it's, it, you know, it absorbs pretty quickly and it's so good for them. So I started using it on myself as well. You know, I would use it on myself. I would use it on my baby and, you know, their skin gets really dry. Um, so it's, it's, it's so hard when you bring them home, you don't really know, you know, where, like what to do at that point. There isn't a manual that tells you, you know? So I got lucky, my sister did a lot of the leg work. she would come, my mom would wash, <clears throat> would, wa would bathe my kid because I was like, so scared, you know? Um, so it, a lot of these new moms, and then, you know, my friends that followed, my best friend Donna had a baby like six months after me. And then my, my other best friend, Anna, whose birthday it is, she had a baby six months after that. So it was like the kids were so close and I had like this mom click and we would share all these things that, we, and we're all into organic and natural and organic doesn't have to be expensive. You know, a lot of these things you can hand make at home. If you really put your mind to it, you know, you can hand make it at home and, and, and you know, know what's in, in the ingredients. I didn't do that. But I know you can, you know, and I did the research about that. And, you know, what I would suggest is always check what's in your stuff, you know, for like shampoos, just, just, you know, they say, okay, don't use shampoos that are sulfate, you know, they have sulfates, but there's other things as well. There's parabens and there's, you know, other harm, harsh chemicals that you use that are not good for you. And, you know, and it, your scalp absorbs it and it's not just your hair and, you know, skincare, like skincare is a big deal. I know one of um, my friends is on here. Um, Talar, Talar, are you listening? Are you on there? She created her own um, uh, skincare line, you know, so she- What is it called? Talar Natural Skincare. And she went through, she went through, like, she was talking to me about, you know, how many things are in these beauty products Right. that you don't recognize and you have no idea and most people won't even read up on it because you think that okay the fda approves it so we should trust it but that's really or, or the packaging is you know organic made and you know non-gmo or whatever and so there is these hyped like keywords that are yeah. all over the packaging so instantly your brain's like oh this must be fine like this, this must, must be, be great good. yeah 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 and it really doesn't have to be expensive like you know, when I, w when I was going through all these different brands of shampoos and conditioners, and, and it was so new to me, and, you know, we were looking at all these different things, you know, I was, I was thinking, I was thinking, like, why, you know, I got a lot of suggestions of saying, look, you have a high-end salon, you know, bring in high-end product. High-end product doesn't have to come with a very expensive price, you know, and hence why Amika was great for us, because, you know, a $20 shampoo, $20 conditioner is affordable for everyone. It's affordable for an 18-year-old, a 30-year-old, 40-year-old, where a bottle of a, an Orbe shampoo, which I've used, you know, just to see, like, just to see what the difference is. And, and there, this is really a... 
I mean, I, I used the the black, <laughs> like, the black one that goes, like, a little creamy towards the end. And I yeah. think it was a uh, leave-in conditioner or something. Like, it wasn't, it wasn't shampoo. Dollar, right? oh. And, like, it was really great. But, but so were other products at, like, a third of the price. So I think for me, I never actually bought it again. Um, and so I think what I would really love to know is what are some of the products that you're using? And then what are some of the products? So I think for me, I never actually bought it again. Um, and so I think what I would really love to know is what are some of the products that you're using? And then what are some of the products that your kids are using? Okay, so I from the beginning, I um, had a membership with Honest Company. Um, I like I like Honest Company um, for my kids um, in general. It worked really well for my girls. They they didn't have a reaction. Their um, their uh, diapers are um, uh, chlorine free. Um, the difference between that and like you know a, a diaper that has chlorine is it masks the smell. But I'd rather change the diaper sooner than you know worry about worry about um, chlorine. So I really like their products for formula. <clears throat> Unfortunately, I wasn't lucky enough to have milk. So for formula, I trust all Ger anything German made. <laughs> it's just amazing. It is. It really you is. Talk, and and I discovered that like yes, our cars are German and they're great. But like I've discovered that anything German made when it comes to when it comes to your baby is great. And then things from Australia that are for us personally are great. There's so many great brands that are us from Australia, Kevin Murphy, like it, there's so many good brands, but for a baby, I think that, that um, there's a website called organic start. I think that was organic start. Amazon there. She's probably going to comment in a minute because she uses it too. And they have different formulas and they have different price points. So you can buy something that's inexpensive and you can buy something that's really expensive. It's just what your budget is, right? And um, they're just great formulas. Like you could, you know, you you see like the sugar, the cornstarch. I remember. So when when I had Emma, I brought her home my first baby, and I was I was I had some milk, so I didn't really go into formula right away. But when I was in the hospital with Maya, they brought Similac. I think it was Similac. Yeah, Hip and Holly was the the German made formulas that we love. So I think they brought Similac and it's really comfortable and I would understand why moms would want to use it because it's literally in pre-made packages. Mm -hmm. You just shake it and it has a bottle on it and you oh, literally wow. just hand it over to like, it's so easy. And my baby would like, she loved it right away. She would eat it. She's finished the whole thing in like seconds. And then I brought her home and I have this, you know, organic German formula and I move her to it and she won't eat, won't eat. And then my sister comes over and she's like, I knew Simplex bad. I knew it's bad, but I didn't know how bad it was. And she opened up all the research and she was like, look at this. Look how much cornstarch and sugar. And, you know, you're oh, little. that's why she loves it. Yeah, that's why it tastes so good. So, you know, so much sugar in there and she loved it. You know, she was like eating up on it. But, but it took about a couple of days for her to get used to it. And I really... I didn't never liked giving um, cow formula to my kids. Um, you know, I think it's unnecessary. And, um, you know, my, my kids um, from like the age of like eight, nine months old, they were on goat formula, goat milk. And uh, goat milk formula is, you can find it at Whole Foods. Um, there's a brand called Cabrita and it's great, you know. And, um, you know, it's so easy to digest and it doesn't give them those stomach problems and everything. I know we're talking about beauty, but like a lot of moms don't like realize that there's so many things are available to you and like you, you live and you learn, right? Clean beauty like was important to me when I had a baby. And honestly, it, it wasn't before that. What was important for me before that was, was cruelty-free products. Mm -hmm. I'm a huge animal lover, huge animal lover. Like I love them all. I love the rats. I love the mice. You know, neighbor's cat killed a mouse the other day and I cried for two hours. <laughs> and, <laughs> Meanwhile, there's a coronavirus outside. Right, like, right, yeah. right. And I literally sat there and cried because that mouse was dead in front of my front door. <laughs> it was very sad. So but um, for me, cruelty-free products are the most important. 
I always been and I'm not a big like product junkie like I like products like every other woman I like to buy them but I don't overbuy anything um I think it's unnecessary you know you don't need 50 different palettes of of you know highlighters and bronzers unless you're a makeup artist you know yeah. you don't need it if one works great just stick to it you know and my advice is if you can find an alternative to the product you love that's cruelty free please do that because if you just go into a you know a video of, of what they do to these animals um at the labs you will understand why people are so passionate and they're against you know right testing because you it's not necessary i feel like at this point at this day and age it's just like a it's not necessary it's so to unnecessary put people, it's, it's so unnecessary you know it, it, if you spray uh you know if you spray a uh dry shampoo let's say on a bunny you know the bunny might have no reaction and you spray it on me i have a reaction like that nothing to do with each other people have allergies to different things i might not be allergic to something and somebody else is allergic right. to you can't you you know you can't base that so so yeah so i think that um you know once i realized that i have someone else to take care of other than myself that's when i i started doing a lot of research and reading up on things and you know um even in the salon everything was so new to me in a salon right so i would you know i didn't know like people are throwing things away and i didn't know what's recyclable what's not recyclable and there is a company called um green circle salons and they're coming to my salon i think we will have them we were supposed to have them in march but right. this happened so um what they do is they're they're great because what they do is they bring bins for everything so every single thing in your salon can be recycled everything wow. your foils to the hair to the color tubes everything and everything has a se se separate bin and you literally all you have to do is put a label on it and send it um it's amazing it's a little pricey. So if you're a brand new salon, I'll give a couple tips that you can, you know, manage to re to try to recycle as much as you can without having to bring an extra expense un until you're ready to bring that extra expense. You know, a lot of the, your stylists, like when you're in a salon, stylists are busy. You know, I see everything because I'm not behind a chair. But stylists are running around, they're mixing color, they're mixing bleach, and they're, you know, throwing it in the trash. And a lot of salons don't even have a recycle bin, you know. So I have recycle bins um, where they mix the color, and there's certain things that could be done. So anything that could be opened and rinsed can be recycled, right? So, you know, bleach, you know, the bleach containers, uh, the per peroxide containers, we recycle our shampoo, conditioner, uh, bottles when they're done we rinse them we recycle them could you explain like how you divide the products what is it that people need to kind of like start grouping together to to make the process easier if you're just starting and you don't want to get so the or if you're a really busy salon and you don't have someone that can do that mm -hmm. um you know, just look, just, just common sense and look at what can be thrown away, right? And what can't. So like the, the colors, the, yeah, like your actual colors that, you know, you squeeze. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you can't rinse that. So you can't recycle it. But the cap that's on top of it, you can recycle. Right. So literally, it will take you two seconds when, when you're finishing your tube of color to just literally take off the top and just throw it in a recycle bin. Right. You know, um, my receptionist, Tiff, she, she, you know, she's on it with me. She, you know, recycles all the shampoos and conditioner bottles, obviously aerosols and sprays, like they're not, you can't recycle them. Um, we recycle masks and like whatever else. It's literally what you do at home. Like when I have a bottle of, let's say, you know, I use glass bottles for, for tomato paste, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's messy, but you just rinse it. It's two seconds you rinse it and you throw it in the recycling you just rinse it you know it's and it's it's so much easier and we we know better now we know better that we're polluting the earth and, and what we can do and the dangers we can cause and you know it literally takes a couple of minutes of your time like my kids know my older daughter always asks me mom is it recycling and she'll go and recycle it in the recycle and, and my husband and everyone else that comes to my house knows they throw something in the trash they're getting it out because it's recyclable and it's going to go in the recycling. And it's yeah. so, you know, I remember when I moved to Vegas, like f five, six years ago, you know, to join my husband, 
there were no recycle bins in Vegas. <laughs> I remember like the first two weeks I was there, I was like, I, you know, I was separating trash and recycling. I was like, I took it outside and I was like, okay. Wow. <laughs> like, where do I throw this, you know? <laughs> Meanwhile, in California, it's been around for so long. So, you know, some states are way behind. And, and being in California, being in LA, like, we know all about this. And, and there's no excuse. You know, if you can't afford to bring a company that will provide you with the bins to recycle, take, do your part. And, and just, you know, even if there's times that you're going to throw something away and you're in a hurry and you're going to throw it away, that's fine. You know, it's going to happen. But make a conscious effort to recycle. And there's so much plastic in a hair salon. There is so much plastic. And even though, like, most of our, our um, you know, packaging for, like, Amika and for Kevin Murphy or the other brands we have, they are, you know, they, they have, like, 90% recycled material and everything. But you still have to throw it in the recycling, you know? So it's really not not hard. The only hard part I would say is the conditioner, and I will see I will see Tiff like cutting it and like cleaning it out sometimes, you know, just to like throw it in recycling. And it's really not that hard, you know. You don't want to contribute to polluting the planet. It's really not necessary, and, and nobody's perfect, you know. We all do things that that we could improve, but if you just make one change that will make a big difference. If everyone just makes one change, one conscious effort to make a change, that'll be big, you know? So speaking of, of this one, one thing that you can change and it'll, you know, cause a ripple effect. A, one of the things that you were actually telling me and uh, Larissa, the time that we came to your salon was about the Brazilian blowout. And I personally was shocked because not only do my friends do it, my mom, I think, used to do it too. Uh, she stopped but she did it a few times and I always knew that it has a lot of chemicals. I mean, obviously, because yeah. you can smell yeah. your eyes like water. I mean, it's like you can't get it on your skin. So obviously, it has a lot of chemicals. But I think I'm just, I don't know if ignorance is bliss or I just like didn't care enough to look into it. But when you told me about those things, I mean, I couldn't get out of my head. And I kept telling everyone about it. So I just yeah. really want us to talk about this today. And like, so, so this is going to be a, a hard pill to swallow for a lot of, you know, for a lot of stylists that are on here, and they are doing it and, and to each their own, honestly, you know, if you continue doing that good for you, and if you make an effort of, of, of uh, you know, going more chemical free, then, you know, it, it, it it's whatever works for you and whatever works for your salon. Me as a salon owner, I, you know, you know, the first couple of months, I'm in my office for the most part. You know, I'll come out, I'll walk around, I'll talk to clients, but I'm in my office. I do a lot of the paperwork and I do marketing from there and like everything else and the bills. So, you know, I started getting, um, I have I have like mild asthma to begin with, but I started getting really hardcore asthma about, I would say about six, eight months ago. <clears throat> and... I had no idea what it was coming from, no idea. So, you know, I would use an inhaler and i just forget about it. Life is busy, I have two kids, I have a job, like it's, it's just life goes on, right? So, you know, then I went to a specialist, I went to UCLA and, you know, the specialist was like, well, I think you had like, you might've had like a mild flu and it just kind of lingered. And, um, you know, let me give you the steroid inhaler, it'll go away. I get a, I get a steroid inhaler and, for like a couple of days, it's fine. And then it's back up really bad to a point. I would stay up all night. I got, went to the emergency room twice um, because I couldn't breathe. Like I just, I couldn't breathe. You know, my husband would stay up with me and was like, I don't know what to do. Like I have no clue what to do. Cause I, I couldn't breathe. And um, I, I started realizing that there's a pattern, right? So when I would go into a salon on a Saturday and it was a busy day and a couple of my stylists would be doing the Brazilian Blowout, whether it's that brand and we, we carry another brand that's just a little better. It's called um, Trisola. And uh, that one doesn't, it's the same amount of formaldehyde, but it doesn't expose so much in the air. So you don't breathe as much of it in. And it's a great product. It works really well. Um, and honestly, what it does to your hair is incredible. Like you walk in with frizz and curl and like you walk out with the shiny, beautiful head of hair that is so manageable. So you go home and you wash your hair, you come out of the shower and you know, that's it. that's it. It's like, 
it's so great and it's so easy to fall in love with the product because it really is amazing. But what's well, not amazing? <laughs> so the amount of formaldehyde that's in there um, has been banned in most of Europe, Australia, New Zealand, and most of Europe. It's banned. There's a reason, right? You know, FDA here approves it. Um, the problem with formaldehyde is, is it has so many names. So you might look at a product and it, you think that it doesn't have formaldehyde, but then you're good. You think you're good, but formaldehyde has so many different names and you have to Google every single ingredient. And when I would look at the back of like a Brazilian Boa bottle and I started doing like a little bit of research when I started seeing a pattern before I even talked to my stylist, I started seeing a pattern to, I would go in on a Saturday and then that night I would go into an asthma attack. And then let's say I wouldn't go Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. And like, I would go in Wednesday. By Wednesday, I was like, okay, I'm better. And then somebody else would be doing it. I would go into an asthma attack. So I sat down one night and I was up to like five, six in the morning. And I did just incredible amount of research. I read all these lawsuits from like these stylists. There was a stylist that was in ICU for months, her lungs were failing. Oh my God. And there, there's a group of stylists that had a class action lawsuit against the Brazilian blog. And there's actually a group of lawyers that their entire practice is based on the Brazilian blog lawsuits. What happened with them? Do you, do you remember like the outcome? So the, 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 the stylist that started uh, the uh, the stylist that styled, started the, the um, lawsuit was one that it was a different state and she was in a big salon and everyone was doing it and she started getting sick so, like she started getting nauseous and she would throw up and she didn't know what it's from and then it would happen again and, and again and then it started happening to some of their co-workers so eventually it took forever to the, for the salon owner to ban it and the salon owner finally said okay I'm going to ban it and, but then what they don't realize is that the Brazilian blowout stays in your hair for a really long time. So every time heat is applied, it goes, it re gets released back into the air. Okay. And you're breathing that again. So now, like, just to clarify, so let's say I came in and I got, I got this procedure done. Um, my mm -hmm. hair is gray. I go home, I take a shower and I want to blow dry my hair. The minute I blow dry my hair, again, it comes out. Right. It's a small amount. It's not as big of an amount. So, you know, the danger to a client isn't as big as the danger to a stylist. Uh, my stylists are young. You know, a lot of them are either single or they just got married. I have a, I have a pregnant, um, you know, lash artist there. And I sat there, I sat in my, in my room that night and I just thought to myself and I was like, if any of them get sick like I did, and is it worth it? Yes, it's great profit, great profit. But is it really worth it? Is it worth anyone's help? And I started slowly talking to some of my stylists, right? Um, my, uh, one of my uh, stylists, Shantae, who's been with me since day one, um, I brought her into my, my office and we talked and she was like, my eyes would have been burning. Like, and she goes, I just needed an extra push to say, you know what? It's just not worth it. It's not worth it, you know? And, you know, I said, look, guys, for the, for the stylists that still want to do it, I, I said, you know, we, then this happened right before, right before, you know, the pandemic and they closed us down. And I said, we're going to set se separate hours for the people that still want to do it. And it's going to be either before work or after work. And your client, you will have like, you know, the heavy mask, you will have a heavy mask on and, you know, the place will be ventilated and, because there's kids that walk in and out of that place and you can't warn everyone. And like, I don't want to expose somebody's infant. Like my friend, my best friend came in with her infant, you know, a couple months ago and, and nobody was doing it that day. Otherwise I wouldn't have let the kid in the room, but like, what if somebody was doing a personal blowout and like right. their, infant, their lungs are so gentle, you know? So I just think that for me, you know, it's just not worth it. And there is actually uh, a formaldehyde free, um, there's a formaldehyde free um, 
Brazil blowout, it's keratin smoothing treatment. It's it's really not a straightening treatment because it can't straighten your hair fully. The only thing that could like make your hair like slick straight is the Japanese treatment, which we don't do. The Japanese straight the Japanese straightening treatment, and it's insane amount of like insane amount of chemicals. You won't even be near it if somebody's doing it. So um, so uh, there is one, and um, it's called it's f through a. Uh, uh, a brand we care about, Trola, and they have they have one that's formaldehyde free. Yes, it doesn't last that long. It's not as as strong. Powerful, yeah. Yeah, but it doesn't have formaldehyde, right? So formaldehyde is a known cancer causing chemical. So, you know, to as I said, to each their own. But to me, is it worth my stylist's health over time? Absolutely. Because might not nothing might happen for years and years and then one day we might is right. it worth is it worth it for them is it worth it i just don't think it is for me it is not you know and and a lot of these salons aren't even equipped like my salon's not properly equipped for it you know what i mean like the, the ventilation that has to go in place for something like that has to be just insane you know and and most salons aren't equipped for it so you know, I would suggest that if you love the treatment and you still want to do it, as I said, to each their own, you either can look into the alternative or you can do it, but be cautious of it. You know, make sure you're wearing a mask, make sure you're, you know, you, you make sure your client's wearing the mask, make sure the doors are open, the windows are open, make sure that you're not ingesting that if you're pregnant or planning to get pregnant, you know, I, it's just not worth it. Like our health is, you know, at the end of the day, if you're a stylist, we had, we had a guy come, he was an educator for um, Paul Bryant, who's a cruelty-free um, hair color brand. And he said, <laughs> He said that his wife is on medical leave because of the Brazilian blow. She can't breathe. She was on a ventilator for months. Oh, and she, and he's a hairstylist and he did it for years. And, you know, there's a whole group of stylists like that are that talk about it. And, you know, you don't know these things until you research. And like research is so, so important, you know. Like, do your research, know what's going into your face, which is the, your biggest organ, know what's going into your body. You know, if you're eating organic food and you're eating, you're eating, you know, well, and you conscious about what you put in your body, also you have to realize what's around you, what you're ingesting, what you're inhaling, you know. So those things are, are important to me. And again, you know, everyone is different and, and you know, I'm able to to do a lot of these things because I'm not behind the chair for the most part, because my stylists are so busy. They're always running around, you know, some like, especially busy season, they're like two clients at a time and they're trying to ac accommodate everyone. You know, I have a great group of stylists. I'm so lucky. Everyone that's been in that salon has been with us from the beginning. You know, there was a few that added on and they're great, but like it, it's, there's su such a strong support system. When I talked about the Brazilian blowout, there was not one person that was like, but. But money, yeah. But money. Right. You know I mean? So um, I wanted to kind of ask our audience if they have any questions um, so they could type it into the comment section and then um, we'll Well, we do have that. a few questions. So can we go back? I haven't done this, by the way. Guys, this is my first live and I only did it because of you. <laughs> I'm not. I am Thank a social. You. I can seem like a social person, but I'm better with one-on-one -on -one and not in groups. Oh my God, my roots, Helen, save me. Um, <laughs> they, they look really nice. I don't know what you're <laughs> Oh my God, it's so bad. Um, okay, so I'm going to go back a little bit and see if we can read some of these comments. I know there's a lot of system fans. I promise I will bring John back in here for a second. But this is not about John. He did a live earlier. So if you guys wanted to ask him anything, please go ahead and DM him. He does answer. His DMs, not always, but sometimes he does. You know, I, I, you know, I can't answer your questions. Right. I, can't, I can't answer your questions. So if you have system-related questions, please feel free to message my husband. You know, but um, you know, um, let me see if we have any. Do you see any? Where do you buy your face wash? Um, if you follow Amika, oh, 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 <laughs> if you follow our our salon page. Anything we carry, we link, and we we have some some uh, um, skincare, and we carry a limited amount of skincare. What brands have. do you carry? Lemieux is the only one I carry, and they're a Korean 
brand and they're actually a lab. So a lot of these like big names are manufactured in their lab and they're like triple the amount where, you know, something that it, like we have an amazing serum that like our clients are, are obsessed with and it's like $60, but a serum to, at, of that magnitude in Sephora would be like $300, you know? So, so it's a great, it's a great line. Um, I'll link it. I can, I can, um, after this, I can link it and I, you know, I could uh, tell you guys where to get it if you're not in the area, um, you know, but you can get it from the salon. Uh, John, you are the best drummer in the world. Obviously, there. Okay, so oh. most of the questions are about what products does he use for his hair, and I love <laughs> that this is this is a theme. So he has curly hair. He uses Velveteen Dream from Amika. It's a smoothing shampoo conditioner, and it kind of tames your frizz. If you have frizzy hair, it tames your frizz. It's an entire line, you know. And I don't use it. I use the three D, which helps regrow your hair, and it's more. Um, it's more volumizing, but when I want to like have my hair really slick straight, I will, that day I will use that shampoo. Does so, it make your hair kind of a little greasy because no. it's so high? No, it doesn't. No, it's not very heavy. If you have really oily hair, you know, I would suggest to use their signature, which is, which is, um, norm core but like i have a lot of clients uh, we have a lot of clients that love it a lot of helen's clients are obsessed with velveteen dream like i think her clients are the ones that buy it the most and i can get helen to explain to you why in a That'd minute because she has a lot of like armenian clients who have a lot of hair and she can explain to you why she recommends she recommends velveteen dream to a lot of her clients because i know like most of her clients buy it I think she's on here. I'll get her on here in a minute. Okay, she... another question. Has he ever dyed his hair? No. Uh, yeah. Oh, are you kidding? Google John Dolmayan hair color. There's a whole... <laughs> oh. Uh, so he was blonde at one point. That was way before me. I don't know if my sister remembers it, but, you know. Oh, Actually, I'm going to yes. get... You get... Where's my phone? I'm, I'm Googling gonna... right now. You should totally Google it. I'm going to get my sister on FaceTime right now. She's going to hate me because I don't think she's ready, but I, let me get her on FaceTime. Um, cause she, she's been, there she is. You're calling me. Yeah, I know. I'm FaceTiming you. Oh. <laughs> Say hi to everyone. <laughs> hey, Ash. Hi guys. Hi. How are you? Thanks for joining us. Uh, thank you. I'm I, I love how high tech we are. There's a FaceTime. There's a live stream, there's comments. She's in New Zealand, guys. <laughs> She's in New Zealand. And, um, you know, I wanted to add her to our lives because, you know, she has a lot of in insights on, on these products that we use and what to put in our bodies and everything. Um, so she gives me most of the recommendations on this. So, so um, let's, um, I actually wanted to know what, uh, Ange, uh, what shampoo do, like, what products do you use? And then what products do you um, let your, you know, son use? Um, I'm really sensitive to scent, so I tend to use products that are very mild, um, like Moroccan oil, the shampoo conditioner will literally give me an allergy and an asthma attack. The scent is too strong, I don't like smelling it in my hair afterwards, it leaves a greasy residue. I've been actually using Amika's Normco and it's been fun fantastic for me. It's really humid here in New Zealand, so, um... Regardless of any product that I use, it literally just, you know, the humidity wins. Um, so what I tend to do is I tend to um, let my hair air dry. Mm -hmm. brush. I put some leave-in conditioner in it from um, Amika, and I loosely braid it and let it kind of dry in a braid. And I love that. It out. It's mildly manageable, and then I'll take certain slices diagonally um, if I'm going somewhere. Um outside of the farm I'll just curl it and that's about it I also don't wash my hair very frequently yeah. uh, I wash about once a week and uh, for curly core I really think that's ideal unless you're the kind of person that puts layers and layers of products in your hair which I don't yeah uh, I'm holistic in my beauty approach so. Maggie washes her hair every day so why don't you tell her that well, she well, what will happen is you know, your, your body is a very uh um, intelligent mechanism what ends up happening is if you keep washing all the natural oils off your scalp it's gonna like keep producing more because it feels like you need it so i think sometimes the transition um of extending the washing period takes a bit because your body has to adjust 
So I think about a month or two till you're like, okay, I'm not a, you know, grease ball walking around. And honestly, dry shampoo helps in that transition. Um, I got you. I got you. So, yeah. Where where were we? Um, oh, so I was saying about the way you shampoo your hair. Right, right. I think a lot of people make the common mistake of kind of lathering their hair and just putting everything in this just giant foam where it's truly unnecessary. The ends of your hair are not going to get any oil on them from your scalp unless you go a year without washing your hair. Um, so I think it's really important to use a very small amount of shampoo, kind of emulsify it all through your fingers, and then put your hand flat at in mm -hmm. in through your hair and on your scalp and literally the way you wash your face is you would just shampoo your scalp what that does is it it, it, it targets where it really gets dirty which is your scalp mm -hmm. and then once the water mixes with the foam and runs through your ends it will be a lot more gentle than just putting direct shampoo on your ends and you'll still clean your hair but it won't strip excess moisture and you want to do the same exact thing when you're conditioning um but you your application is different so you want to condition about two to three inches away from your scalp start with your ends and slowly work your way to the mid shaft so like end. this and just put it on exactly like, okay so a lot of people complain about an oily scalp, they shampoo their hair, and then they slap the conditioner right on their scalp. Your oh, scalp and, and like go it. like this. Exactly. So you want to kind of tilt your head, put the conditioner through your fingers, and just really run it through. No. Hold on. No. I understand. Um, Wait one second. One more question. Um, Diana, maybe you could answer this too. What is the difference between like conditioner and like a hair mask? And like, can you use both as frequently as like you would use the other? No, you would. You don't want to use a hair mask every time you wash your hair. Um, I have I have dry hair. I'm a blonde, and I ge I generally tend to use a uh, mask most of the time. But, um, and you can answer that. They, should they be using a uh, mask? How often should somebody be using a mask? Again, it depends on the condition of their hair. I think if the hair is very brittle and very dry, if it's brittle, it's usually, you know, lacking moisture. Um, so protein, really heavy protein masks, I, because they tend to kind of build up on your hair. Mm -hmm. um, I like moisturized. I actually prefer using a leave-in conditioner to using a mask. A uh, mask, I usually use about once every two weeks. Um, uh, I prefer it. I also use a very strong clarifying shampoo right before I mask my hair, which, um, you know, really open the cuticles on your hair and allow the, a, a deeper penetration of the mask. So you want to kind of use that time at, and that product at its best capabilities. Okay, that makes complete sense. All right. What about washing your hair with water? I keep seeing that. Put a mask on. I actually prefer to stay for about half an hour. Not a lot of us have a lot of time, especially moms on a weekly basis. So um, I feel like once or twice a month is enough. Again, if if your hair is not breaking, if you're not prepping your hair for you know. A, color service that's going to strip, uh, you know, moisture out of your hair, etc. Makes sense. Okay. Thank you so much for answering that. Um, regarding like cold water, just because it's been like, really talked about, uh, is there really benefits to, you know, rinsing your hair with cold water? I, I can't, uh, I, I didn't hear the question. She's asking if there's a benefit to washing um, your hair with cold water. Cold water. Uh, I think cold water at the end after you've shampooed and yeah. conditioned. To close your pores. It's good for your skin, it's good for your hair, it's good for your scalp. Um, uh, another common mistake a lot of people make is they apply shampoo to hair that's not fully saturated, that's not fully wet. So you kind of want to really thoroughly wet your hair for about two to five minutes before you apply shampoo on it. That way the cuticles are really open and your hair can lather properly. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Thank you so much, Ange, for, for joining from all the way from New Zealand. All right, you should stay on uh, on uh, the live and I'll uh, ask you questions if <laughs> you need to be. Thank you, Ange. <laughs> okay, so, um, 
yeah so back to um i think i think helen has jo- helen are you on there let's see if helen has joined us because i will ask her about velveteen dream but we'll go back there so there's you know certain things that you can use obviously everyone's hair is different you know therefore everyone uses different i feel like you know there's so there's th- different lines of shampoos and conditioners and amika has a lot of them and and i've had like all of them at the salon people do but i ended up dropping like one or two of them and there's a re- so i started realizing like there's a there's a color safe shampoo that's called vault from amika mm-hmm. but it's a great it's great like it works really well but the rest of amika is color safe so you know whether you buy like the signature line or the other it's, it's color safe so as long as like your shampoo conditioner whether you're buying it from you know your local salon or or you know a beauty you know uh, you know, distributor i don't know where you buy your stuff but it's um you know always just look for color safe if you have color treated hair you know if you have blonde hair like my sister has you know we're very different like she has oilier hair she has oilier skin so we've always used different products for us you know for me masking my hair once a week has always worked for me and it's always been great like i get my highlights done every couple months you know and um you know for me especially when when you first get you know a bleach chip service whether it's balayage or highlights we always suggest for that first week to use masks you know for the first wash the first you wash your hair you know also brushing your hair before before you wash it is a big deal so wash your hair brush your hair before you go into the shower don't go into the shower with tangled hair the last thing you want to do is tangle it up more you know right. and that's how you get product build, build up so there's certain things like everyone's hair is different honestly and that's why you have a stylist that will recommend and your stylist will give you it's a prescription you know your stylist knows your hair knows what your hair needs so anytime if you don't have color treated hair it's so much easier for you to go buy sulfate free you know paraben free shampoo but if you have color treated hair if you went in and you've spent 3 400 $400 on your hair and then you're buying drugstore shampoo i think val talked about it as well yeah. um in your live and that was very informative because if you're spending all that money on your hair and then you're stripping the toner with with a sulfate shampoo like you literally just throw away money you know literally so what i actually do in the salon is a lot of people don't know is i will treat so if you have drugstore shampoo conditioner if you bring it throw it in the trash for you um, i will i will give you you know a percentage off your shampoo conditioner because we don't want you use that you know but if you bought shampoo conditioner from somewhere else and it's sulfate free you know paraben free use it you know use what what you think is best for your hair but ask your hair you know so Um so Larissa well I mean you're kind of you're not I mean you're not our hairstylist necessarily but but you know Well Larissa is our client. Can say that yeah. Larissa is a client. She's been to the salon. Exactly. So I'm 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 literally coming as soon as soon as this is all over. But uh what shampoo would you guys recommend um or supplements for post baby hair loss? So and here Angela wrote sorry she wrote Larissa don't worry about that now plus nothing really works against those hormones. Yeah. Yeah, so when I had my first baby, my hair was down to my you know, my butt and it was like thick and heavy and healthy and I didn't lose a single hair. With the second baby, hence all this baby hair, with the second baby, I lost so much hair, like literally chunks of it were coming out in the shower. Chunks of hair was coming out in the shower and I was on the same, you know, hair care plan and I was still taking my supplements I was taking my postnatal natals which is bullshit because prenatals and postnatals are really almost the same thing so don't waste your money on postnatals just continue doing your prenatals you know and um you know honestly just it, your hair is going to if it's going to fall out it's going to fall out you know it's going to fall out I would say collagen is great for your hair um you know post baby use use collagen like you will we'll lose a lot of collagen um in general but like the baby just takes all your nutrients away you know eating really well a lot of women jump into going on a diet right after they have a baby and what they don't understand is you're shocking your body and you the baby's taking all this necessary 
you know, vitamins out of you and you're not putting it back into your body. So going on a diet right before a baby, right after the baby is a no-no. Eat well, eat the healthy fats, eat, eat, you know, avocado. If you're eating fish, eat salmon, like whatever you're eating, but don't like take fish oil or, you know, supplement it, whatever you need, but don't change your routine. I drastically changed the routine when I had Maya. Right. I completely went vegan. <laughs> and uh, my body went into a shock, but it had nothing to do with me being vegan. It was, I wasn't eating the right things. Of course. So you can be vegan and eat the right things. You, I, was, I wasn't eating enough of the fats. I wasn't eating avocado. You know, avocado is so great for you and so great for your skin and body. And I wasn't eating that. So I was just like concentrating on trying to get back to, because I was, you know, the slum was already open. I was trying to go back to like, you know, my pre-baby weight, which, and then I was trying to manage a salon. So everything was happening at once and there was a lot of stress and my hair fell out real bad. And stress can, 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 can do that as well. So you really can't control it and don't change your routine. Like if you're using a shampoo and conditioner that works for you, continue using it. You know, so there's, is there anything from Amiga that like you might say, cause I think I heard you say something that they have a line for like hair loss or something. 3D, it, it's uh, obviously you have to use it for a while for it to work, but there are shampoo conditioners. 3D is the only one I know from Amika that volumizes and also gives you, um, you know, let's helps your hair grow. If you research, there's a lot of shampoos out there. If you have real, like extreme hair loss, there's like medicated shampoos and stuff. And honestly, if you just ask your stylist or even your pharmacist or your doctor, they will know because at that point, it's not just couple of hairs here and there like you need real help. yeah you know I think for me castor like I I you know if you don't want to go into a salon and buy like gravity lash and I'll show you because I'm sitting in my vanity area but I literally have because I took my lash extensions out and my lashes are great because you know if you go to the right person your lashes are not going to fall out because they don't overuse the glue and they don't put heavy lashes on so my lashes are these are my lashes and and I wore lash extensions for seven years, nonstop. Seven? And seven years. And my lashes are perfectly healthy. Um, these are a couple of things I started using um, after I took my lashes out so I could take a break, you know, before I start again. Grande Lash and Grande Brow, they're great. You can actually use the Grande Lash on your lashes and on your brows. But, you know, you don't have to buy this. You can just go and buy pure Jamaican, Jamaican castor oil. And it works wonders. So I actually have a routine right now because my hair is still in the process of like coming back. I have a routine right now. I have pure black Jamaican castor oil and it's very oily. And what I do is I will mix it with either my Amica shampoo or Olaplex, um, not shampoo, either my Amica conditioner or Olaplex conditioner or, or a mask. I will literally put a couple drops in it and you can buy it on Amazon. You can buy it like at a drugstore. It's, they're cheap. They're not expensive at all. Like the castor oil is, is like maybe $10 for a giant you know, tube. And I literally just do a couple droplets and I put it on my hair and I let it sit for a little bit. And when I wash it off, my hair is not greasy. It doesn't like let it be oily. But I also put the same castor oil on my brows. And then there is one actually, and I'll show you, this is from this is Black Jamaican Castor Oil. And it's literally, it looks like that. Oh, wow. That's nice. And when you do put it on your lashes, it's a little weird because it's a little, it little, feels a little oily and greasy and everything. So I would literally do it right before I go to bed. And yeah. then there's this one for your brows. So honestly, you can use this. You can buy the Grande uh, Brow. I know Latisse, a lot of people use Latisse. I haven't heard good things about it. I've actually heard when you stop Latisse, it, um, your lashes fall out and it's really expensive. So if you're on a budget and you can't go and buy um, the Grande product, I would say, you know, get the, the three pack Jamaican cast, cast, castor oil. And it's literally like a three pack. So it's the oil, uh, the mascara and, and the wand for like your brows. And it was $11, I think. So I think um, a while back I had lashes and it wasn't the lashes uh, lady's fault. I mean, it was mine. I, I or the girl's fault. I kept like picking at it. And I'm like, I just realized I'm one of those people that just shouldn't have lashes because I, I pick at things. Um, yeah, but right. anyway, so it wasn't her fault. But obviously my eyelashes fell out completely. And I was 
so just shocked yeah, by horrible. the fact that I don't have lashes. Yeah. And so, uh, and Larissa wrote over here that our grandma used castor oil all the time. So I was like in tears. I was like, oh my God, mom, like, look, look at what happened to me. And uh, <laughs> she's like, oh, just use castor oil. And we had some. So I took a mascara brush that I wasn't using anymore. I threw away the mascara, I washed the brush, and I just put it into the castor oil. And then I just started doing this right before bed because it forms like little droplets. It almost, does. Like on your, like, like this one little hair that you probably have left, yeah. like hanging. It so does. it's a little weird at first, but after like, I think it was like even 10 days, my lashes, like the, the base of it mm -hmm. just like grew back to the point where it's, it's like not embarrassing. It grows so fast. It's so great. I was, when I was a baby, actually, I was, I was born with, I was born with like no lashes no brows and my sister like literally had bangs at birth like I don't know how that happened I was a bald child no brows no lashes nothing and my mom actually used to use castor oil <laughs> like when I was a baby just to like regrow my you know my my uh, brows so I know it's like the oldest remedy and it works really well and it works for your hair too you know if you're not worried if you're not somebody that's like you know, has insecurities of leaving the house with your hair not done up or anything. And like, you can survive a couple of days with oily hair, you know, use castor oil, like use, use um, coconut oil, pure coconut oil, put it from your roots all the way down to your hair, put a hair cap and sleep with it. Yes, your hair might be greasy for a couple of days, but it's worth it. You know, it's worth it. So there's things you could do at home that you don't have to buy products if you can't afford them you know you could you could do those things and um you know and it will it'll help you um castor oil is i'm telling it's amazing it's it's one of my favorite things and honestly it just brings everything back but my lashes were so great when i took when i took my extensions out you know but i have like very blonde lashes so i have to put mascara on otherwise you can't see them yeah, yeah but they're so long and healthy and for having extensions on for that and I have no damage it's incredible it just you know makes you realize that if you go to the person that knows what they're doing you know you are never I bleached my hair for 10 years and um you know Helen did my highlights every three months you know like root highlight just back-to-back -back highlights and my not one hair would fall off my head wow not but, one hair, but I have to run. say there you'll have to be a good client like yeah. You, you, you shouldn't be like me who, you know, just went home, slept on the, like the pillow like this, you know, <laughs> yeah. picked out her eyelashes. No, if you're, if you're a picker, no lashes, no extensions, no hair extensions, because if no. you're picking at them, I'm you're constantly. picking your hair out. Like, that's not for you. So, you know, it's like acrylics. Like if you're going to chew on, on your nails, like no point of having them, you know? So yeah, it, it, you should, you know yourself, but like, I'm not a picker. So for me, it's, it's easy. You know, I do it. So I said they are long because mom cut them when you were a baby and shaved you. No eyebrows and rubbed them both with castor oil. What did she say? She's spilling the tea on, on, on what the real reality is. Hold on. I can't, I can't read. <laughs> they are long because they were long. They're long because mom cut them. Yes, she cut my brow, my lashes, but my brows, <laughs> you are embarrassing me, my mom. Uh, I was, she was using it for herself too, but she was putting for, she was cutting my lashes so they grow, but she, for my, for my uh, brows, she was putting castor oil. <laughs> uh, and, yeah, it worked. I mean, it worked, you know, it works. Old, old remedies always work, you know. That's why a lot of these new brands, they're incorporating a lot of old remedies in it. You know, there's like jojoba oil and like all these oils that they're bringing in, they're so great. They're so great for your face and for your hair. Like for the longest time, I didn't use chapsticks. I didn't use anything but pure vitamin E oil. And I would literally get like from, from like Rite Aid, I would get pure vitamin E oil and I would just dab it on my lips every night before I went to bed and I never had dry lips. So, you know, it's really just whatever is natural, what's in nature is always going to be better. So... You know, that's why a lot of these new companies are starting to realize that so many, get yeah. a lot of old remedies. Yeah. So, um, guys, you do you have any more questions like for us? Does, does anyone have questions other than John joining? John will, I promise you guys at the end, John will come and say hi. I promise. 
but he's uh, already so kind okay seriously <laughs> like i have to tell you i'm a huge fan i'm, I'm trying to like really keep it together and, like, <laughs> cool. but i'm really looking forward to like hanging up and like screaming i just yeah. find it all it's just like <laughs> yeah well we'll 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 get there we'll hang out once the social distancing is over we we will hang out well we this is what we do john's back you have fans on oh here God. Uh, hey John, what are you eating? Is that yogurt land? Pink berry. Hmm. So you have some fans on here asking questions. Did they ask any questions or was it on the old one? It was just like, I love John. Tell John to join and say hi, Joseph. Hi, Caronian. Joseph. So say hi to Joseph. I just did it. All right, fine. Um, okay, I have to ask like a person. There's a favorite. Russian star. There's a Russian. Uh, fan saying I should leave my hair alone. I touch my hair all the time, okay? That's that's, that's a bad habit. Sorry. <laughs> and don't lie, Maggie, you know you you love the Backstreet Boys more. I mean, okay, I won't comment on that one. Okay, I have to ask a personal favorite, Diana. Uh, my mm -hmm. fiance is here and he's like the biggest he's probably gonna lose his shit right now, but can I can I just Yes. <laughs> Hello. Hey John. Congratulations. Thank you. Oh my God, are you okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. When are you guys getting married? October 10th. We don't know where. It was going to be Armenia. It was going to be Armenia, but be right. we'll see what, what happens. Um, Taking inspiration from you guys. I know you guys got married in a backyard, right? In Las yeah, Vegas. we got him married in front of a couple of ducks and a few friends. <laughs> <laughs> we were planning on having a big wedding later. It just never, we just... I don't know. I'm we're over big, at a certain I'm point. I'm not so. a big wedding person. He's the one. I like. I like the party. Not me. We'll, we'll <laughs> <be sorry. laughs> like not me. Not no, me. I'm not a wedding no, person. No. Okay. Remember, yeah, I was yeah. the girl that wanted a big wedding anyway, so it worked out great. Um, they're actually gonna. I showed you the place that they were gonna get married. It was that old castle-looking place. We we're gonna go after the baptism. So. Oh, cool. Yeah, Maggie was helping us with that, but it all fell apart. Is it cold so. in, in October? Though? It's, it's like the perfect weather. It's it's I'm, I hate the heat. So it's not hot, which is great, but it's not cold where you need to wear a jacket. Well, Diana said she'll come and do your hair for free. Oh, uh, oh. thanks. Actually, I want you to do my hair as a pony. They're not legally do hair. So that's Angela. I mean, it, it's questionable with the legality. But, but John, I want you to do my hair. Look at your ponytail. I mean, <laughs> that's, that's, no, I, been, I want the not, fade. I believe want it or not, my dad, my dad was a barber, so I do have those talents ingrained. You know, I, it goes from generation to generation, right? What are that's you doing got my now? Music. What are you doing now if you can't go to the barber? I cut it myself. He did it himself this morning, huh? Yesterday. I'm surprised. I, you, I you think the live stream is about. Dude, to... you, you give yourself a fade? You can fade your own hair? No, I didn't. I, I'm not that talented. Can you, you can lower, lower up a little. <laughs> lower up a little? <laughs> <laughs> lower up a little. I, I, I lower too up. much coffee. All right. Calm down. Man. All right, guys. Have fun. Nice to meet you. And congratulations. Thank you, guys. Aw. Thanks so much, guys. That's Thank you. Really yeah, he's very big on, like, taking care of his um, hair. He spends a lot of time on it. So. so I could so, do. You're in the shower, like, an hour every morning. But, yeah. That's cleanliness. You That's know, it's very personal. <laughs> That's I, I hope TMZ is like covering. <laughs> it's, a, it's a forty-five minute bathroom break. Then it's an hour. <laughs> I'm spilling the bit. So he's like, that's that's my that's my personal. He goes, that's my personal business. Well, he's Mike looks the same oil he uses on his beard. And when I met him, he actually he used to use this like really oily wrinkle. Like I think it was L'Oreal. <laughs> anti-wrinkle night cream right but he used to use it in the morning so he would do his morning routine and then he would have like all this like cream on his face and i would i would be like why is your face so shiny you just took a shower and he was like i put my anti-wrinkle cream i'm like can i see that bottle and i threw it right in the trash because he has he has oily skin and he has big pores and he's like, literally he was putting all these like oh my god it was hilarious and he if he likes something he'll buy boxes of them so he had boxes of this like night cream underneath his his vanity area and it was I literally had to get rid of all of it because it was so bad and he would put it in the morning and his face 
it was not. I can't. But Diana, I have to ask you. So I'm sure like a lot of, you know, I mean, girls who have boyfriends or are married, sometimes, uh, you know, either the, the guys will ask or the girl just kind of wants to kind of, you know, just suggest gently to start using other products. What kind of was the transition with that? How do you hint around that? Or, you know, what do you do? Do you just buy the products? And it's just like, oh, here's like a Christmas gift. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a the thing about us. We actually, John and I are both, um, we're very straightforward with each other. Um, I have very thick skin, so I don't get offended and neither does he. So it's, <laughs> <laughs> I can just imagine he's just like, no, I'm actually really sensitive, but okay. <laughs> Honestly, I would just like, I probably said something in the terms yeah, I, I probably said something in the terms of your hair is red, your face is red and oily you can't use that anymore. And um, he was like, no, I like it, but I like it. It makes my skin, you know, it makes my skin nice and moist. And I'm like, yeah, but your pores are this big and they're red. And that means your face is like it. Stop using it. Like I'll, I'll be straightforward and I'll say, it looks like crap. Your face looks really bad. You need a facial. Like I, we have that relationship where he'll just laugh at me and he'll say, okay, you're so mean, but he will do it. You know, I'll have to be like, that looks really bad on you. Like, just don't do it. And then he'll be like, okay, fine. But he's the same with me. Like, I'll wear a shirt and he's like, he's like, what is that? What are all those colors? Like, you look like a pinata. <laughs> and I'm just like, <laughs> you look like a pinata. And he just, you know, and, and oh. I'll just look at him and I'll be like, I like it. Like, you don't like it, don't look at it, you know? <laughs> so we have that relationship where like, I don't get offended. I have really thick skin. It took me, it, it now I'm realizing that I have to be more sensitive, but I'm generally like that person that is just, you know, I just say it like I don't beat around the bush. And my friends are like that. And they're very straightforward. So I'm used to that. You when know? is your birthday? I'm December 11th. I'm a Sagittarius. A Sagittarius. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, but like, I think honesty is a big deal. And we're very honest in our relationship. And he you know, he just tells me as it is, and I tell him as it is. And honestly, you know, you're doing it for them. So if you come, if, if you're, if you should know your boyfriend or your husband, like if your man's sensitive and he takes everything, you know, to his heart, then you approach it in a different way and say, hey, I have, I got this for you. Why don't you try it and give me feedback? You know, I want to know if, if it works well. Like, you know, you can start with that and, or switch it out. Like, you know, you lost, you accidentally lost his face wash. And that's also. <laughs> And also his beard shampoo and you lost it accidentally you know? i lose his t-shirts sometimes <laughs> yes t-shirts um from like 30 years ago i'm not kidding we're at a warehouse like going through his old stuff recently and he literally has t-shirts from 30 years ago and he's like this person gave it to me and he'll you know and some of them it's really cute he'll say like i was we we're at you know we were in europe somewhere touring and like somebody gave it to me and it's a memory or a fan threw it, you know, on stage. And I got like, there's, there's certain things that Absolutely. memory. Yeah. So he'll hold on to things, but um, I'm all about throw everything away. Like donate it, get rid of it. If you don't use it, get rid of it. Like don't hoard anything, you know? So I think that he just, he's, you know, just honesty. I just tell him like, look, babe, you know, you don't look into these things. I research it. You know, I think I know a little better about this topic and he knows better about other topics that I ask him like business questions all the time, you know, where, you know, beauty questions he'll ask me and there's nothing wrong with it. There's of nothing course. wrong with a guy getting a pedicure. There's nothing wrong with a guy being clean, you know, washing his hair with the proper things. That's and attractive. <laughs> yeah, very attractive. There's nothing wrong with you putting, putting, uh, you know, using the right face wash or putting moisturizer on your face you're taking care of yourself and it's attractive and it's attractive for f males and it's just attractive for females as much as men like women to take care of you know themselves it's vice versa nobody wants a guy that's you know nasty don't be nasty <laughs> you know? just, just if, if you any of you have to take one thing away from this it's just don't be nasty don't be nasty nobody that's likes, it. You know, if, if somebody's in love with you and they ignore it in the beginning believe me when you get married it's a whole different ballgame because everything that didn't bother you when it was like, you know, the, the dating period, it's going to bother you. So get it out of the way before you get married. If he does something that bothers you, say it, you know, say it. Because then when you say it, when you're married, they're going to be like, you never mentioned this when we were together. And now all of a sudden we're married and you don't like that, you know. So just be honest, be upfront, 
you have fun with everyone in your life. And, you know, like there's a reason our salon actually, like we have such a great vibe. And I don't know if you noticed that when you were there. Perfect. It's because our, like our girls, they're all so open and honest with each other. You know, if they need something, if I do something that offends them, they come to me. If I, if they do something that offends me, I go to them. And it's such an open relationship where we just, you know, talk to each other instead of holding a grudge and, you know, walking around angry for days. And it's hard. You know, we work with so many women and it's so hard and like, but you know, at the end of the day, we're there to empower each other. And it's such a great place to be, you know, where you come and you share things that, you know, you won't say to your spouse, you know, you won't say to your parents and, and you say to your coworker who you see all day. And, and that's one of the main reason that I enjoy being in a salon so much is because of these women that I work with. And they're so great. Like if I'm having a bad day and I go in there and I just tell them and everyone's just been so thoughtful, like they'll, they're all in bad situations right now, but I'll get a text like, Hey, how are you doing? Can we do anything? Like we're talking to our clients about products. Like, is there anything else we can do? Like, let us know, you know what I mean? And it's just, it's so great to have people like that. Um, and I consider a lot of, a lot of, you know, the, the people that, that work, uh, at my salon friends you know and actually there are friends like I have one of my best friends um, is a stylist there obviously my sister works there uh, the recep my receptionist is my cousin you know so so we have a really close group and we're really really lucky because I hear a lot of drama from other salons that women just like just you know just bring each other down and it's so unnecessary you know we're just because you're in the same industry doesn't mean you have to you know talk shit about the other stylist and and it's just not necessary so about that i think that you know i think that exists a lot in different industries particularly i'm from the tech industry and so i i you know see that happen a lot actually and i did a lot of i kept thinking about it like well why is it right i mean technically we're on the same team so right. oh, cut out uh, so why yeah. not fight and try and take each other down? Um, so I think that one of the top reasons is that we've actually been constantly told and always shown that there is only some part of that entire pie that we're able to really take. And because we don't see the opportunities as this one big pie that we can all be part of, we're like, well, only there's this very little amount of pie it's left. A huge and so, pie. Yeah, and so it's th there's pie. only so many people that can actually be there. And it's very hard for us to sit back and say, well, actually there's really a huge pie because yeah. we've never really seen it. And although I love to believe that, yes, we have the entire pie, I mean, we really sometimes don't. And so I yeah. think that instead of us, you know, really, tr trusting and being vulnerable and allowing for us to trust the other person and be like we're gonna actually create this coalition and really help each other because some things need to change on such a large scale um that i think that instead of doing that it's so much easier to just be like i you know what it's all great and this cause is great but i you know i need i need to advance in my career and so i'm gonna step over you and so no, it's very very nasty. And I got a lot of, I got a whiff of it when I, when I opened the salon because a lot of stylists that I've known, you know, for years or, or knew indirectly knew them or they knew my sister or they worked with my sister. A lot of them were kind of like, like, what's like, you're not behind the chair. You don't understand. I don't want need to be behind the chair to understand. You know, that's why you have the artists doing the art. Right. And then you have the management doing their part. Like John, you know, his band, there's four extremely talented artists, but they have a group of management that is behind the scenes. And without them, a lot of what they're doing won't happen. Of course. You know, and, and, and that there's a reason that that management is in place. So to, to allow talent to be talent, you know, and for me, that's how I look at it in my business. I allow the talent that are my stylists to do what they're doing, what they're best at, right? And I do everything else behind the scenes. If anything breaks down, everything from marketing to make sure everything is in place. We have enough stock, always stocked up. We have new clients coming in all the time. You know, we get Yelp reviews, like everything that happens behind the scenes. And, and um, you know, also if anything breaks, like I'm not busy with like 20, 
you know, clients and I can't fix it. Like I fix everything that breaks right away because there's a reason that I'm behind the scenes, you know, and I don't have to be a stylist to manage a business. Like it's business right. is business. You know, and I'm also a kind of person that asks a lot of advice. Like I'll pull my stylist if I'm trying to bring something new in and trying something different. I will bring my stylist in and I will ask them. Like when I when when this whole thing was starting, it, it was really supposed to be a spa. And then Helen, who's one of my closest friends, she's a hairstylist. And we joined in and, and you know, I wanted her to be there, you know, my sister you know, and it went from like two, three chairs to eight chairs, you know, to it like hair kind of took over because it's so fun, you know, like I can't imagine now having just the spa because the hair part of it is so much fun. And me walking out and talking to those clients and I spent a lot of time talking to the clients and I think most of them know me really well. And a lot of them have my cell phone number and they call me personally and I, they even call me in the middle of the night to make appointments and I don't find that annoying at all. Right. You know? I actually like that. I enjoy, I can make something happen for them. So, so, you know, I let my stylist be, you know, the artist and then I do what I do. So you, it's not, a competition. it's not a competition because I'm not a, because I'm not a stylist doesn't mean that my, my salon's not going to be successful. My salon's going to be very successful because there is no way that I'm letting it fail. I will never let it fail because not just for me, but there's a group of women who love being there and enjoy being there, you know, and I, and, and for them as well, you know, and I also want to leave, you know, a legacy for my kids. Like I have two daughters, you know, if they can take over a salon that their mother started, it's just incredible, you know? So, I so totally agree. that's wonderful. That's amazing. She, women shouldn't be in competition with each other, like empower each other, help each other out. You know, don't, don't talk smack. Like I hear it so much because people will come to me because they think that if they tell me about someone that's talking behind my back, that they're actually, I'm actually somehow going to appreciate them, but I don't because you're just spreading the More. rumor. Right. And when it goes from the mouth of directly from the person to the next person, to the next person. And by the time it comes to me, it's really bad, you know? So I really don't care to hear it. Right. And if someone something bad to say you know keep it to yourself it's not necessary there's there's so much negativity in this world and it's not necessary like there's so many stylists i have on my instagram that work at different salons and we chat all the time like we chat you know and it, it's so much fun like val and i were chatting yesterday you know and she's so cool like her 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 live with you was so much fun and she's such a like and i asked her i was like hey like I'm so I'm awkward in front of the camera. And she's like, you just do your thing and ignore it. And, and, and you know, and, and like, you don't, need to bring, you don't need to bring anyone down. There's, well, there's it, go around. it's interesting you're saying that because um, I actually didn't really tell much about myself. So hi, I'm Maggie. Um, uh, <laughs> right. I was just like, it's been like two hours. And I've been there were too many myself. of us. It was me, John, my sister. <laughs> uh, so we're, we're building a platform for people to kind of come together and share genuine moments and recommendations and honesty with each other. So it could be like stylist to stylist, stylist to customers, um, just a community of beauty lovers that are going to be sharing real and authentic um, reviews instead of just influencer marketing or ads or any of that, you know, things that I just call garbage. Um, in this day and age, it's really hard to actually find a voice that isn't bought, um, unfortunately, but that's the reality of the industry. And so there are very now select few individuals that you actually really trust. And so one of them is actually probably your hairstylist, right? Uh, you'll probably trust them over just an influencer that you saw and most likely they have been paid to promote that. And so it gets a little tricky. And so you end up buying really expensive products that sometimes don't even work for you. Um, so we're creating a community of people that like Diana and like Val, who just love to share their expertise and honesty. And it's a you know, no judgment. Uh, you can use, for example, like Diana said, you can continue using Brazilian blowout. That's kind of up to you. Same thing with smoking. Um, you know, it's, it's yeah. cancer, my mom, but my mom still smokes. And so I, there's nothing I can, you know, do to change that. And, you know, I don't judge her for it. So I think right. that it's very similar, but I think that what's really missing in the beauty community now is authenticity and honesty and, and, and about anything about 
products you're using, services you're doing, the hacks and tips that you have, it, it doesn't have to be a secret because something that you're doing can really help another person. And I think that there's so many, like in general communities across the internet that have been very successful in, you know, being like a support system even uh, to each other. And so there, we're building a platform for all of that to happen. Um, so yeah. right now we're- it's we're definitely we're, need it. Yeah, it's so right now we're actually, what I wanted to say was I really wanted to thank Diana. Um, and I, you know, I think Val so much and still continuing because the amount of support that we got is the reason why we even started any of this. And so I think that the minute I walked into your salon, you were like, hey, what is your question? Okay, da -da 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 -da. I'm not done. <laughs> da -da -da -da. Wait, wait, I haven't shown you like the back door and this door and that door. And so the amount of information that we got was what inspired for us to be like, actually that's like forget what we're building this is actually something we need to build because there's this lack of information you you, you opened up like my eyes and literally i think it was like in under an hour um and i couldn't get that and i actually tried to search um on the internet and find all of this information it was buried so deep and so this is part of the other so problem people are you know not necessarily lazy, but they're busy, they have different priorities. And so, you know, I think that when someone just does all of that legwork, there's so much value in just sharing that. And so I think that, I think that, you know, when we are able to come together and do it together and just build this up together, there's such value in that. And because you show that to me and Val, and I think like now, hopefully, you know, maybe we could invite someone else or help someone else or whoever it is. Oh, I, have, so I, have, I have so many people for you. Like you haven't even met, you haven't even met most of my like stylists and they're all amazing and so helpful. And like, they're, you know, that's such a great community. And, you know, I knew about it because my sister was working in a salon and all her friends were just, she's still friends with like from her first salon. And there's just such great people and, you know, they're fun. Hairstylists are in general, are, like fun. A lot of them are like super loud very open, very honest, you know, and you have to appreciate that. And it's art. Like I see sometimes I'll walk out and I'll see a client's hair and then I'll walk into my salon and come out my, my office and come out a couple of hours later. And I'm like, how did you turn that into that? Like, how did, how did that work? You right. know? And it's really art. And like a lot of people say, you know, I know like in, not in the industry, a lot of people will say, you know, it, you know, it's a, it's a hair, it, you know, it, it's a it's hair. It's hair. It's just hair, but like not, you know, it's not just hair, it's art. You're painting. It's like makeup and artist. It's science. Makeup artist. It's also painting, science. Like you're painting someone's face. Like you're transforming someone's face. You're making someone's nose narrow. Like it's just, it, it's for me, it's so incredible. And like what my stylists are doing on the daily and I see it and I post all the pictures and like, it's really incredible and you can never get tired of it. And like, I always tell them how great they are because they are. You know, and they tell each other how great they are. Like sometimes, you know, one of the stylists will, will do like a crazy punky color or something like very different. And then I'll see the, the rest of the girls kind of like, how did you do that? Like, that was so cool, you know? And a lot of them even like share formulas. Like I've seen them stop and go and help. You know, there was a, there was a, I'll tell you the story real quick. There was a mom who brought in a 12 year old daughter who had, you know, who had a bird's nest on her head. She hadn't brushed her hair in like three months. And it was bad. Like, literally, it was so bad. If I looked at it, I would have been like, just chop that off. Like, there's no way you're saving that. And I'm actually going to post that. I have never posted it, but I'm going to post it on Essentia so you guys could see it. And I was I was home. I was with the kids. Nobody was watching the kids. And I took a look at the camera at the salon. And I see there's three or four of our stylists. It was it was Helen, uh, Helen's assistant, Rob, uh, Taylor, and Kayla. And they were all... <laughs> working on this like literally everyone was standing there with brushes brushing it out oh and i think it took three hours three hours to get it out but they all worked together and it was so like it was just so amazing to watch that everyone dropped because she was a kid and they didn't want to destroy her that her hair they didn't want to like cut her hair off because she was a pretty like child and she you know she she just needed help and like helen literally sat there for no joke three hours and it was a saturday so it was a busy day and they brushed that crap out and i'm gonna post pictures before yes. and after so you guys see how bad it was and like it was just so amazing watching that like watching them come together and it's not like oh that's that's your problem that's your client i'm not getting paid right. for that 
I, we don't have that at, at our salon. And I love that. That's why I'm so picky about who I bring in. Like I really vet before I bring people in because it's such a dynamic. And the last thing I want is for that dynamic to change. You know, I don't want someone coming in that's not going to get along with the rest of my girls because they get along with each other so well, you know, and they're even picky. Like they're, you know, I'll get like, I'll ask them, I'll, you know, and the new person comes in, they're always like, who is it? Like, what are they, you know, they always ask me questions because they don't want the dynamic to change. And, you know, they're great. Like they're very, and through this pandemic, we've seen how women come together, you know, like I FaceTime with my friends all the time and we see so much and like my style is calling and checking. We, you know, I call and I call and check on them and, 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 you know, just to see like how everyone is doing, you know, it, it's a hard time for everyone, you know, and I'm no exception. Like I don't, I'm not doing business. Like it's, and I still have the same amount of work I had before. So, but you make it work. You have to make it work. If you want something to work, if you want it really bad, you will make, make it work. work. You know, if you give up on something, that means you really didn't want it that bad. You know, and at the end of the day, it, if it's worth it for you, if that's your passion and that's your career, you will push through it and you will make it work and you will come out of this stronger. And I know a lot of these stylists, they're going to come out of this stronger than ever. You're going to have a ton of people coming in. Your clients are never going to betray you. If you're an amazing stylist, your clients are not just your clients, they're your friends. Right. Right. They're going to come back to you. And whether they're just doing root touch-ups and they can't afford afford highlights but they are going to come back to you and you can help them out and and as much as you can obviously you know and and honestly just just work together like work together ask for help you know for like new moms for anyone like ask for help if you're overwhelmed and if you're in a bad situation call someone even if it's a stranger on instagram someone that you follow and like you think that they might be able to help you ask for help you never know until you ask you know, that's my problem. John always tells me like, you know, you don't know, ask, like ask, like for this company, ask if you buy an amount, like, will they give you a break? Like, will they help you out because you're a new business? And I'm like, I don't want to ask. And he's like, you never know if you'll do it until you ask, ask, you know, and, and I'm learning that, you know, right. And, and communication is a big deal. And I, you know, I, like Larissa is just, you know, you guys are just amazing. And what she's doing in Armenia is incredible. And I know about what's going on right now. I'm going to have John posted and we're going to all post it and get involved in it. I'm going to link that too, if you can send that to me. Yeah. And um, just so I could give like a little overview, because, um, you know, she, she can't be on here right now. So um, Larissa, uh, who is my wonderful, beautiful sister, she is a CEO. <laughs> Yeah, no worries. Uh, founder of Teach for Armenia. And so right now the problem in Armenia, I mean, probably around the world as well, many kids don't have laptops, don't have Wi-Fi. And so while online education might be working for some part of the population that is able to afford things like that, uh, there are thousands of kids in Armenia who can't. Uh, she's been so successful in being able to place incredible volunteers in really bad areas in uh, Armenia in villages and facilitate incredible um, education to thousands of children. So right now uh, they're fundraising to be able to afford laptops and some type of infrastructure um, to be able to help the kids continue their education and for this pandemic to not necessarily mean that, you know, if you're poor, you're not able to continue in education. So. Um, we're all coming together and hoping to raise enough money to be able to do that. So uh, we'll be actually talking more about that, you know, through our posts and links and stuff like that. So it'll actually be easier for you to donate if you're willing to. Um, so anyways, that that's kind of what we were talking about. Well, this, okay. So yeah, anything else? If you guys have, we have just a couple more minutes. Um, I know we've been on for a long time, but it was great. Like, it was time amazing, passed. yeah. If anyone else has any other questions, you guys can DM me directly. You guys can, um, you know, send a message to Sofetch. Maggie will answer anything you need. Um, I will po post about the cause um, that Larissa has in Armenia. And, you know, you guys, even if you can't donate, share it. Share it and, and you know, right. bring awareness to it. And that's always important. It's help your, your, your stylists, help your local salons. You know, the... It's free. If you just go on Google and give them a good review, it's free. You know, it costs you nothing, you know? Support your stylist. 
book your appointment, call your stylist and say, I want to book for May. They're going to be overwhelmed, you know, and um, just show your support, refer your family and friends and, you know, just help each other out. This is the time to come together for everyone, whether, whether you're, you know, in the beauty industry or, or whatever else you're doing, this is the time for everyone to come together. And just an example, um, just how, you know, some people think like, oh, you're in the beauty industry, what can you really do? Well, for example, there was this, you know, thread that I was on and they got a lot of nurses that uh, were in this thread because they needed beauty advice because from the masks, they were getting cracked skin and bleeding. And so they were asking the community some of the products that would help. And so the community came together and they started matching people based on area. And so I got matched with this, you know, one girl named Rochelle. And so I sent her a skincare package. And I think like, you know, it was one of the most incredible, incredible things um, to kind of see. One, the community really came together and it was like, oh my God, this is incredible. And so constantly seeing how many nurses that are in need don't have time to even like cook yet alone, like look at the cells in the mirror, let alone like take care of their skin. Meanwhile, they're wearing masks that are literally creating like raw yeah. meat around yeah. their ears. And just all day, their job all day. they're wearing that all day. I, it's it's awful and, and one of the tips I don't know if like just in case anyone you know wants to do something similar um, they asked for headbands if people could just make a headband and put buttons so buttons in the back of the uh, ears so that they're not putting it on their ears but putting it on the buttons because here uh, it's oh, my phone's about to die. Uh, because it started getting really raw and it really hurt them and so just little things like this go such a long way and it just reminds them that like you know while we can't constantly thank them and be there and you know thank them appropriately we can do something really small even if it means like sending a gift card and uh doing something for your doctors your nurses or just supporting your local restaurants your local salons um I if you're gonna them. anything anything it is just i think now I a lot of people buying products from Sephora that our local salons carry. Sephora doesn't need, you know, your money. They don't need At it. This moment, uh, you have to a lot of these big corporations are getting giant breaks, you know, huge breaks. It's your local moms and pops businesses that are not getting a break, you know, so support local, do local. Also, there was right before they make made us, you know, close, Amika was doing something that I was going to announce and the month of April was going to, um, you know, 10% of all of our product proceeds were going to go to cool capping. I don't know if you know what cool capping is, but cool capping is something that they put on the hair doing chemo. So women and men, they don't lose their hair, but it's so expensive and insurances don't cover it. So, you know, they were raising money. Amika was raising money for, to, so it was like a thousand dollars every cool cap. Wow. You know, but they won't lose their hair, you know, and it's right. so incredible to see these women that are like, I don't have to lose my hair. Like there is an option for me not to lose my hair, you know, and, and that's something that as soon as we are able to open, I'm going to resume that because it's incredible. Amazing. So, I love that. that is incredible. And we're going to be doing things for nurses and we're going to have certain prizes set for nurses and I'm going to come together with my stylist and we're going to come up with something. And if anyone needs anything please call us. Like my stylists are doing virtual consultations. Don't cut your bangs. Like if you need help, if you just need help how to manage your hair at home, it's free. Your stylist is going to help you, you know, communicate with them and communicate with your friends and, you know, check in on your friends, check in to make sure your friends are okay. Some of my mom friends are alone with their kids. Like, you know, they're losing their minds. Like, yeah, I love my kids. I love being home with my kids, but sometimes you need that break. You need that girl time. You need, you need your friends, you know? So check in on your friends, check in on each other. You know, don't assume that somebody's okay. Don't assume that somebody's mean or if they're like short with you and they mean bad. It's they might be going through something really horrible that you will never understand until you ask, you know? And Definitely. this is a time for everyone to come together. Don't freak out. Everything everything is temporary. Everything is temporary. At the end of it, it this this shall pass too. And it's gonna pass. You know, and, and we'll be okay. But as long as we're safe and our families are safe, money is just, yes, I know families like, you know, you need money to survive. I understand that. But health is, if you have money and you have no health, you have nothing. Yeah, exactly. You have nothing. So just check in on each other and, you know, women just encourage each other. And, and please, like, just 
that whole like, you know, talking behind each other's backs and, and bad mouthing each other. It's just so unnecessary. If you're frustrated with a person, call them directly, call them and say, Hey, you said something you posted very simple. Like you posted something that I thought was about me. Was it about me? Like, just don't assume, don't hate the person. Don't go into a rant. Don't go into telling other people that this person is horrible because you don't know what they're going through. Of you course. know, so just encourage each other and women, you know, just come to together and help each other out. And that's all I can say. This is we all need it very badly right now. We all need encouragement. We all need help. We all need to know that we're all going to be okay. You know, completely agree. Thank you so much, Diana. I know. Thank you. It was always so good. So so good talking, to you. So good talking to you. I'm I'll- gonna link some of the things we talked about. Perfect. Um, you know, I'll link it on uh, Essentia, and I'll, I'll link it on my page as well. If you guys have any questions, don't hesitate to DM me, um, and uh, ask me a question well, if it's um, If I can't answer it, I'll ask one of my stylists to reach out to you and they'll answer it for you. We'll also be like doing um, like a written format. I think we'll do like a blog post or stories or something to kind of summarize what we've talked about and maybe put some of the products that we've spoken about as well. It'll probably come in the next like few days for us to gather all of this. Yeah, yeah. I'll also ask my stylist to put together like a routine that you can do without outside product as well because as much as i want you to come to my salon and and help out and buy product you can do things at home as well if you don't want to spend money and what i will do is i will ask my amazing stylist that to put together something that they could do at home for oily scalp dry hair and i have a few really good friends that are in the you know uh, skincare industry Amazing. and I'll ask them as well and I'll put something together for you guys and if you have any questions just call me and I'll direct you to the right person if I can't answer it I'll direct you to one of my stylists who can answer it Amazing. Thank you so so much Diana. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Hopefully we can see each other before you leave. Definitely. And happy birthday right. Anna. Happy birthday Anna. Love